Hi, in this video we'll be talking about paths in graphs. This video is a continuation of my previous one, so make sure to watch my previous video first where I covered the basics of graphs. In this video we'll be using a new graph. Here you can see it visually. And here's the dictionary that represents the graph. So, here we have the nodes, and here we have the neighboring nodes. We'll also need the graph class defined in the previous video. In this video, we'll be adding some methods to it. So make sure to grab the code from GitHub if you want to follow along. In the picture we can see that there are several paths along the edges that we can take to get from one node to another. For example, to go from A to B, you can choose either the path through D or the path through D and F. The former is shorter. So what is a path actually? Well, we can define it as a sequence of nodes such that each node is adjacent to the node which was visited last, except for the first node naturally. Two nodes are adjacent if they are directly connected by an edge. So, have a look at the picture of our graph and tell me which nodes are adjacent. The adjacent nodes are A and D, B and F, B and D, D and E, D and F. Let's stick to our example. If you want to follow the path from A to B through D, we have a path of length 3 from A to B. If you follow the longer path through D and F, then we have a path of length 4 from A to B. The path can be written as a list of all the nodes it contains. So the two paths from A to B are A, D, B and A, D, F, B. If we visit each node only once, it's a simple path. Here are some examples of simple paths. E, D, B, F or F, D, A or D, E. As you can see, in all these paths, each node is visited only once. On the other hand, the following path over here, A, D, F, B, D, E is not simple because the node D is visited twice. Now, what we want to do is find all the paths between two nodes and find the shortest path between two nodes. Now, let me get rid of this. This is not part of our code, these are just examples. And now, here's our graph class again. Graph with the following methods in it for initialization, edges for returning all the edges, nodes for returning all the nodes, isolated nodes, this function returns all the isolated nodes. Here we have a function to add a node, here we have a function to add an edge. Okay. Now let's add the two methods we need at the end of the class definition. Let's begin with the method that returns all the paths between two nodes. So, def all paths self node 1 node 2 path equals an empty list 
the optional path parameter is set to an empty list, so that we start with an empty path by default. Now we add node 1 to the path. So path equals path plus node 1. If node 1 is not in the graph, the function returns an empty list. So, if node 1 not in self graph return an empty list. If node 1 and node 2 are one and the same node, we can return the path now. So, if node 1 equals node 2 return path. And now, if none of these is true, let's create an empty list that will store the paths. So, paths equals, here we have an empty list, and now we take each node adjacent to node 1 and recursively call the all paths method for them to find all the paths from the adjacent node to node 2. The adjacent nodes are the ones in the value list in the graph dictionary. Finally, the method returns paths. And now the other method that returns the shortest path. Shortest path, we just use the method that finds all the paths and then select the one with the minimum number of nodes. This is why we use sorted with a key set to len. So they are sorted by the length, the number of nodes. And this is the first element in the sorted list, so the element with the minimum number of nodes, which is the shortest path. Okay, and now let's see how it all works. Let's create a graph. G equals graph and we use our graph dictionary and now let's use the two methods in our code so the path from A to B here we're using the method all paths and the shortest path here we're using the method shortest path then the paths from A to A and the paths from F to E. Now well, let's run this code and here is the output. The paths from A to B. A, D, B or A, D, F, B. So there are two paths and the shortest path is this one, A, D, B, because here we have fewer nodes. Then the paths from E to A. This is one path possible, E, D, A, which is of course also the shortest path at the same time. And now the path from F to E, F, B, D, E, F, D, E, two paths possible with the shortest path F, D, E. Okay, fine. And now let's test our path finding on a more complex graph. Here it is, have a look. Now let's get rid of this, and here's our graph dictionary, complex graph, more nodes, and here are the adjacent nodes. And now let's test our class. So first, let's create an object, g equals graph, complex graph, Now let's print the paths from A to I 
and let's find the shortest path. Then let's find the path from B to G and also let's find the shortest path. Here's the code which is used to do that. So the paths from A to I, we're going to use the old paths method and then the shortest path. And the same from B to G, all the paths and the shortest path. Fine. Here's the output. The paths from A to I. As you can see, here we have quite a lot of paths. The first one is A, B, F, C, D, L, H, J, G, I. Quite a long path. Then we have A, B, F, G, I. Fine. Then we have A, E, G, I. And finally, A, I. So this is the shortest path. How about B to G? We have the following paths. B, A, E, G. Then B, A, I, G. Then B, F, C, D, L, A, G, A, G. And B, F, G. Of course, the shortest path is B, F, G. So as you can see, our methods work. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like it, a thumbs up would be great. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to leave a comment or ask a question, you're welcome to do so. Thanks for watching.